Hi there, everybody! This is Arkma. Welcome back to more Let's Play Tales of Berseria. Last time, we fought Medissa, uh, who is more of a Medusa than a Medissa, but we got her finally on our side. And, uh, we got an expedition now. We got some fluffy milk, some leek, and a pirate flag, Bastion crew. And a new recipe, Orosaurin Vichyswa? Swas? Swoos? Ors, 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 The song. I can't get it out of my head. Yeah, so we explored the Crystal Iron Sea last time because we couldn't get the last material here. But I'm going to do it again now. Hopefully a little later this will work a little better. Let's take a look at the meal real quick that we just got. Let's see. We got... Uh, Someone is KO'd. When recovering from KO, 10% of HP is restored. Interesting. Food's ready. It's nothing special. Alright. So yeah, we came back from, uh... From Helavis. Yeah, we were in Helavis last time. And we got Medissa. So now we're just kind of back here at Titania to just regroup. And first, let's talk to a few people. We'll keep an eye on Kamawana. You head on over to the Watchtower and talk to Grimoire. Alright. Now we know. It makes me miss my own late mother. Mothers are truly great beings. They stand higher than any king. Could you leave me for, be for a bit? I don't want anyone to see me cry. Okay. I think that's everybody. No one wants to talk to me? Okay. What about in here? Right. Well, they said to go to the watchtower, so I guess we'll head up this way to ye olde watchtower and see what's new. I'm gonna quickly pick this up. Hey, do you all have mothers? Hmm? Where'd that question come from? Well, after hearing that Velvet, Kamawana, and Eleanor all lost their parents, I just got curious. My mother was a strict, frightening woman, but she died a long time ago. I see. I have no parents either, but the wicked witch who took me in said I was born from a peach that floated down the river. Coming from you, I'd almost believe that. A and you, Aizen? We Malakim are formed from untainted mana. Sometimes humans are reborn as Malachim, but they retain no memory of their previous lives. In other words, we don't have blood relations like humans do. I see. By the time I was aware of anything around me, I was already tethered and being called number two. I suppose having no mother means I don't have any memories before that. I told Medissa that losing a mother is painful, but I can't know how painful it is. Go easy on him, Aizen. He's just a kid. I'm just telling it like it is. But listen to me, Laf, he said. You can share deep connections with other people, even if you don't have a biological family. Malakim, too, can form precious bonds, true friendships, even family. That's right. Your words wouldn't have stopped Medissa if they weren't true in your heart. You really think so? I'm sure of it. It's far better than being a witch born from a peach. Nonsense! There's no nobler way to be born! I have an everlasting friendship with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant, and Bienfu. I hope he's right. That's a good point to be made. I mean, hell, we only- we also have our own kind of weird, wacky family going on ourselves, so... It would be awkward to say otherwise. Is Grimoire in the watchtower up ahead? No, she's up by the tower, by the docks to the rear. She stays up late working, so she eats at night. But boy, is she fussy. Hmm, this stock wasn't made properly, she says, and so on and so forth. So she's not over here, but I wonder if that means someone is over here. I feel like the last few times I've checked, there's always been someone on this side of the watchtower. Oh, uh, these two are still here, but it looks like they're going to say the same exact thing. 
However, there is always one reason to check up here. Because if you remember, there are a decent amount of cat souls. And I need as many as I can. I don't want to get to the next chest and then not have enough. So we are now onward to the other watchtower. I believe it's this way, then straight ahead? I mean, if it ends up taking me longer, I could just cut, but... I just don't want to... I don't know, I get lost easily. I don't want to get too lost and then not be able to find my way around in a decent amount of time. Malakim can have familial ties, but what makes you and your sister siblings if you're not related by blood? Well, a very long time ago, I was born into this world from an earth pulse point up on a sacred mountain. I remained in that place for a long while, and then one day, she was born from the very same earth pulse point. Before we knew it, we had wound up living together under the same roof. Are two Malakim always siblings if they come from the same Earth Pulse point? No. Other Malakim were born there, but I never felt like they were my family. But something, I don't know what, was different with her. If she was sad, I'd feel sad. And if I was happy, she'd be happy too. She can be abrasive, but when she smiles, it's like nothing else. I swore to myself that whatever happened, I would protect her. I made a pendant from a stone on that sacred mountain and gave it to her as a lucky charm. Of course, she just wears it as a necklace. And your pendant? Did she give that to you? She had the same idea I had. She made the pendant herself and gave it to me as a good luck charm. Without either of us having mentioned a word of it beforehand, we each gave each other pendants in the same shape on the very same day. That's when I really knew that what I had felt all along was true. We were brother and sister. Is that her in the picture? Yeah. It's a self-portrait she drew for me on the day I left home. Did you draw her a picture of yourself? No. I don't exactly have an artistic side. Well, I'm sure that if you looked inside her pendant, you'd find a portrait of the person who matters most to her. I hope so. Yeah, and it would be nice if it was you. <laughs> that was a very adorable thing for Eleanor to say, and I'm just upset that Magilu had to ruin it. But it's okay, because she's still the best. Who are? Hi, teacher. Have you made progress deciphering the book? I have indeed. It turns out there was a second counting song. I've already transcribed it. Would you read it aloud for us, child? Okay. Um, when the eight malevolences overflow, in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples and restore them to time immemorial. Four Empyreans shall wield a wrathful sword and cleave the great devourer, two asunder to sleep beneath the earth as scarlet moonlight illuminates the evil. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart, the nameless Empyrean hath one body. Oh, yet more delightful material to keep us awake at night. If I'm understanding this right, it's discussing the specific nature of Enominat? That's what I believe, yes. When the eight malevolences overflow in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples. So, when the world is at peak malevolence, Enominat will use that power to bring an end to all. Is that it? He's going to wipe out all of humanity? Is that what the Abbey is after? Is that why they've been trying to bring back Enominat? No, Artorius is not that kind of man. His two primary ideals are the many over one, and the restoration of order through will and reason. He sacrificed Lofi to protect this world, 
not to eradicate it. You mean that's who he is as far as you know, yeah? People change, Velvet. Perhaps the Shepherd gave up hope. Maybe he lost faith in mankind. Fools prone to sin, endlessly generating malevolence. He's not like that. If that's all true, then what point was there in Luffy's death? Is there anything else in that book? Yes and no. This copy itself is incomplete. There ought to be further pages, but they're missing. For now, I've done all I can. There must be an original somewhere, right? Without it, I doubt the Abbey would be plotting Inominat's revival. We can be sure they have complete understanding of their Empyrean's nature. But this was the only copy in the Royal Villa. If the original is out there, who knows where it could be? <sighs> it's getting pretty late. Why don't we call it a day? Yeah, let's get some rest. Well then, we're back to being by ourselves now. That's a lot to unpack, honestly. But nothing at the same time. So, Rokuro, why don't you speak in these and thous? It seems like it would suit your character. It's just not my style, I guess. Why do you speak the way you do? Ah, that's a very inappropriate thing to ask a witch. Did no one teach you basic manners? Sorry, I had no idea. Uh, Bianfu, what, what's even under that hat? It's a very inappropriate thing to ask a Norman. Where do you go off being so rude, huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I'd assume just his head? Is he just upset that he's bald? Pirates may be lax when it comes to morals, but at least they do their work properly. We're all a little in the same boat. Your life is in everyone's hands, and their lives are in yours. It's a simple sort of faith. We don't obey rules written down in some book, we follow the law of the sea. That actually sounds more troublesome overall. It looks like the survey into the currents around the island is going smoothly. Good. Now give everyone a copy of your report and pound it into their thick skulls. There's a little bit of organization amongst the pirates. We're going to the next earth post point, but do we even know where we're going? She's warm for a snake lady. That's great. She's gonna help me take a bath now. You should come join us too. What? Uh, I couldn't. It's okay. I don't mind at all. Um, I... Hey, Kamoana. Did you know? Dial started to grow a brand new tail. Wow, really? I wanna see? He's up at the observation tower. Let's go see! Modesta, you too! Uh, alright. But don't run, or you'll trip. <sighs> Thanks, Eleanor. I appreciate it. <laughs> Having some girl trouble, my little Malik? I'm just glad Kamawana and Medissa are starting to feel better. Yeah, they both still have a long way to go, but it's such a relief to see them smiling. We've got bigger things to worry about. Hurry up and locate the next Earth Pulse point. Right, okay. Must you always be so blunt, Velvet? I must, in fact. We're up against the Abbey here, and sooner or later they'll find this place. That's true, but still... Do we go find another hideout? No, we'll keep on the offensive. We'll capture the remaining Therians before the Abbey finds us. As a swordsman, I can respect that mindset. I'm not so sure we could hold this place anyway. And we've got no obligation to. I found another Earth Pulse point! It's in the eastern part of East Gand, I think. But that's... Alright. We're headed for East Gand. Then our first stop should be Port Taliesin. Bienfu's just hanging out with that bird. Sigh. Ah. Wait, 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 there was there was multiple ones. What? What? Okay. I... 
The ancient book is a copy. When mankind's despair reaches its pinnacle, Inominat shall reach out and bring an end to all. So that song bothers you too? No matter how many times I read it, I don't see any good in it. Understanding that ancient tongue is difficult, right? Perhaps there's another interpretation? Maybe the end to all actually means an end to all human suffering, for example. That is a possibility. But we're far too lacking in material to know anything for sure. We need the other half of that book, or some other text on the Nominat. We don't have the time to search for it. Wouldn't even know where to start looking. And don't forget that that book is just a copy. Whoever transcribed it might have made an error, too. That's an unexpectedly sharp insight coming from you. I'm an expert at errors. Is that something to be proud of? Magilu made me copy magic tomes for her. I did it pretty half-heartedly. Didn't that cause a lot of problems? Well, when she tried to cast a spell from one of the tomes, the spell exploded in her face. It's really her own fault, though. She told me to copy 100 books in three days. That's impossible. Oh, how cruel. Cruel is right. That witch is a real devil, I tell you. Uh-oh. Slave driver. Bien Fu, let's go somewhere a little more private, shall we? <laughs> Miss Moggy Lou. Hush now. There's no need to worry. I'll make it a half-hearted punishment. <laughs> Here's the one I read the first time. <sighs> oh. Grimoire always looks like she never wants to do any work, but despite all her grumbling, when she starts a job, she gets it done. And quickly, too. She's frank, but she still takes care not to say anything to hurt anyone's feelings. I have to say, I, I like that in a woman. It's charming. Well, sorry if I'm inconsiderate and charmless then. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. You're all still so young and have led different lives. Can't fault you for being you. Well, if you're saying we lack a certain air of maturity, I might not 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 disagree. That's for sure. It's true Lord Artorius has scolded my lack of composure at times. Although I do get the impression that Grimoire has been dependable like that since she was young. And it's a good impression at that. Old Grim's been that way since the day she was born. I hate to admit it, but her combination of insightful words and deadpan expression has charmed the hearts of many a Moloch. At her peak, she had a fan club 8,848 members strong, and her dinner shows would sell out the day the tickets went on sale. Malakim came by the droves to doze off listening to her live readings of ancient books. Wow! I had no idea she was so popular. Yeah, she's even a regular feature in Who's Who Among Norman. Now that I think about it, I could see how a person could interpret her lethargy as patience and her vague dispassion as maturity and poise. Compared to her, I'm just... <sighs> Were you just trying to imitate her? <sighs> no, I didn't mean to. Whether you meant to or not, that kind of felt like her just now. I can see it in you waiting to be awakened, that sophisticated charm. Me? Sophisticated and charming? I don't know. Try talking like her. You know how she lets her sentences trail off. This is your make or break moment here. Uh, all right. I think I know what you mean. Here goes nothing. Oh. What do you think, Laffy said? Do I sound like her? It feels a little off, but you're definitely doing it. I think. <laughs> Aw, oh, you don't have to grow up, Madame Eleanor. You're cute just the way you are. Uh, you stay out of this, Bianfu. You could definitely feel an attempt was made. Kinda in the middle, but attempt was made. We got fishing competition results. Not that I really care, but who ended up winning the fishing competition when we were trying to catch a Therian? Man, that was a while ago. I lost because I came away with nothing. No, it was a draw. As I'm sure everyone remembers, all I fished up were octopus demons. We were competing over who would catch the Therian. Demons didn't count, so my score was 0-2. No, the loss is mine and I'm not giving it to you. That's not just something you can up and decide like that. 
In fact, by fishing up those octopus demons, I put everyone in danger. That should count for negative points. I lost. Who cares? It was all in fun. I care. Every competition must have a winner and a loser, no matter what. That's just how I see it. Yeah, I'm with Eisen on this one. It doesn't do anyone any good to make the final results murky. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Eisen, your curse would mean that the odds were stacked against you from the start. That doesn't make for a fair competition, does it? Yeah, she's got a good point. We'll just have to settle the score some other way. What can you guys do? Play cards? Chess? What? Cards are a no-go for me. I'll just end up drawing jokers. And I can play shogi, but I don't know chess. Then what about arm wrestling? Would that work? Whoa, whoa! Having a demon and a Moloch clasp hands is just asking for trouble with malevolence. You're both adults, so why not a drinking contest? That's it! If we have a drinking contest, we'll be able to compete on an even playing field. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'll have the crew bring out the drinks. Well, that's one way of resolving it, I suppose. Whatever gets it done, I'm not gonna complain. If you guys are gonna have a drinking contest, you're gonna need some tasty snacks to go with all that alcohol, right? Definitely! Let's go out and fish us some snacks. Yeah, let's take out the little boat. We can even pick up where we left off our fishing company. It goes full circle. Didn't we just figure out he can't really fish? Ugh, we were just about to finally resolve this mess. Why'd you have to go and stick your nose into it? What? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, at least we got off of it, but I don't know if we have enough alcohol for the two of them. Both of them seem like they handle their liquor pretty darn well. Hey, get this! I was out fishing the other day, when before I knew it, I'd wound up near a Class 4 island. Once I realized what was happening, I tried to turn the ship around, but then it got dark all around me. Was it a sudden storm? I wish! It was this great monstrous bird. Damn thing had wings big enough to cover up the whole blasted sky. That sounds like a bit of a stretch to me. You think I'm lying? Then check it out for yourself. You just might not make it back alive. A huge bird. Hmm. Well, we got a new class for administration zone. I haven't been able to enjoy chicken after seeing the bird creature on that island. I mean, wouldn't you want to enjoy it more, thinking about that bird and acting like you're eating it? It's time to warm up before we set sail. We'll start with Ifrises no, number 33. Ready? Go! Hold on, how many Ifrises are there? We can't be expected to remember them all, surely. Landlubber, there are 99 Ifrises and you're not a fully fledged crew member until you know every last one. Ifrises? Ifrises? This island's really something. No way I'd want to go to prison here, but it'd make a great hideout. If I'm gonna be left in charge of this place, I'll turn it into the best hideout ever. You're in charge? Someone has to look after this place while you're all running around, maintaining the ships in the base, watching the prince in Medissa, keeping Kamuana company. I'll keep this place running ship shape so that you all can focus on looking for the Therians. But those are just odd jobs anyone can do. You're a navigator. Isn't that a waste of your talents? You dolt! These are important tasks! Someone's gotta do it! We've got another navigator. But is there anyone besides me that could handle all of this by themselves? Besides, ever since I lost my tail, my balance has been off. The seasickness is killing me! That's your story and you're sticking to it? Tell the truth. You don't want to come because you're afraid you'll be hurt again. Uh, no. That's not it at all. <laughs> Don't worry, the hideout is in safe hands with me. My friends used to call me the king of odd jobs. They also called me the king of loafing, but we'll n let's not dwell on that, shall we? The odd job. Alright, well that should be everyone. I'm glad to see Kamoana is feeling better. Kids should be free to be kids, you know. Alright, so our next stop is... Taliesin Docks? 
But we got a few new places. We got the Winged Quarter, and then we also need to go back to Port Cadnix because we have that thing to get. Might also try and head back over to Helleviz just to go see if I can go and uh, do the, the thingy. I'm just going to take a quick look, though. We don't want to be here for too long. Like, might have to come back here later, but if we can do it now, I'd rather do it now. If not, I've got like a bajillion in elf bottles. It'll be fine. We had another good segment there of clips and skits and... I was gonna say treats, but it didn't rhyme. I guess it kind of does because it was plural, but... Meh. Uh, please? Yeah! Okay, we can head this way now. Move over here. Is it this item right here? A unicorn horn, huh? Hey, 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 hey! Whoa! Careful with that! If anyone other than a maiden of pure heart touches a unicorn horn, it loses all its powers! A maiden pure of heart. <laughs> That's a pity. Nobody here fits that description. I beg your pardon. Just what kind of woman do you think I am? Well, when I think of a pure maiden, I think of a princess who's never lifted anything heavier than a pair of chopsticks her whole life. Your view of women is completely messed up. Is it? Well, personally, I'd liken myself to a maiden who's maxed out her purity stat by her third playthrough. But I'll defer to Velvet. Hmm. Hey, Fee. Why don't you carry it? Me? Are you sure that's okay? Honestly? I don't know. But you're the one who wants to make this Omega Elixir. If you can't get the ingredients yourself, I don't see much point in keeping this up. Yeah. You're right. Don't worry about it, kid. Magilu's just quoting some old wives' tale. Unicorn horns are actually just tusks from a kind of whale called a narwhal. Why didn't you say that sooner? Aizen, you spoil sport. I totally had them on the hook. <laughs> At least we've established that Magilu wouldn't be able to hold a real unicorn's horn. Well, for now, let's report our success to the Dell. I mean, I think we already knew that she couldn't, but, you know, I guess it's the thought that counts. But yeah, now we can go stop by to Videl and go give him that. Sick. We've had that, like, for so long, I was getting kind of anxious, because I didn't want to forget. Because we've had this for so long. I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna have to sell some of my comfries, and we're gonna have to... Uh, actually, let's see if we can go back through here. This would be much easier if we could. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to be like me and walk all the way around. You can, in fact, just come back through here. Nope, I already have too much flamestone ship. So the next stop I would like to make is uh, Port Zaxxon. Gonna head over to get that uh, Nordal. Or Port Cadnix. Yeah, not Zexon. Port Cadnix. Cat Cadnix. Cadnix. Port Cadnix. We're going to Port Cadnix to go find the Black Noir doll. We already found the other one. I think it's over there where the green bubble is. We can also quickly head over to the left here and go get... The geoboard location. Again, no one wonder why I'm doing this, how I'm doing this, what this is. Everything is fine. I mean, it would tell people right off the back that we do, in fact, have a Malakim, but don't worry about it. We're not with the church, and that's why you should not worry about it. Okay. Uh, over here? There it is. Turtles! Turtles! Boil oysters in the cloisters! Oh! Got another letter for you, Eisen. Okay. Maybe it's from your sister this time. You want to read it? Me? Uh... Please allow me. Now then. Your cruelty knows no bounds. You bring deep sadness to a fair maiden's heart with each passing day. Repent or else I'll be forced to intervene. This is your final warning. And that's it. Wow, this person sounds really mad. Eisen. What did you go and do to make the fair maiden cry? I don't know, but I could try a couple things on you. Ooh, excuse me if I forget to be scared. The letter mentions a fair maiden. 
Do you think it refers to your sister? What? Oh, you could be onto something. She must be lonely so far away from her brother. It sounded like she's pretty fond of you. Hmm. Are you suggesting that Aizen's sister wrote these letters? I mean, they're certainly unusual, but... My sister wouldn't write something like this. Then maybe it's someone who's spending a lot of time around her. Like, oh, a man whose shoulder she cries on. Damnation, Magilu! My sister doesn't have any guy clinging on to her! Do you know something I don't? Prove it! Bring him here, right now! Calm down, Aizen. No one's saying that. But if you're really that worried, why don't you go see her? <sighs> have you... not done that since you left? I did go back once, a long time ago. But as soon as I showed up, a crowd started to gather. Overcome by malevolence, they turned into demons and attacked my sister then and there. Do you think it's your fault that happened? What do you think? I'd moved us to a safe place, low in malevolence and high up a rugged mountainside. So much for coincidence. I haven't gone back to see her since. Changing topics. I know I said these Nordals were a little off, but I think I'm starting to see that as part of their appeal. Huh? My point is, no matter how odd it might be, any gift could make a girl happy if it's given from the heart. Ha, <laughs> sorry. You can't have one. Nah, I got him. <laughs> Alright, we got the Black Nordal, and our expedition is back. No, we still can't find that last material. Uh, let's take a look at the items real quick that we picked up. We got the Black Nordal, uh, one of a set of four dolls that, when completed, is said to bring happiness. I accidentally hit the bottom. Uh, this one is Ink Black. And then we also got the Unicorn Horn, thought to be a horn of a beast with healing properties, but actually the tip of a whale's tooth. Ew. I wanted to see, just to quickly count how many of these, uh, Nordals we've got. We've got two right now. we got the black and the red. Unfortunately, we don't have a mission to get the next one, but that's okay. We're gonna go back to Renid to go drop this off. Hopefully, we can try and find the other ones. It's just kind of on the back burner. Like, if I see it, I'm gonna take it. If not, oh well. Uh, back this way. You. All right, so we need to head. Where is it? Is it Port Zexon? Sorry, give me like one second to figure things out. No, we had to head. Wait, can't I just go right straight to Renid? Yeah, there we go. I don't know why that was so hard. We aim to create a map of the whole world, so go out there and explore the outer seas. I'm working on it, I'm working on it, jeez. Some exorcists pick up a piece of potentite and a demon suddenly rushed in and stomped him. Uh, so the rumor of demons attracted by potentite are true. Looks like the honest men, like ourselves, should stay far away from the stuff. Potentite? Have we heard about that before? There's a new conversation over here. Did you guys hear? The search party that went to the Laban Tunnel was wiped out by a demon. Really? They were the ones out searching for Count Kapalus, weren't they? You mean the one who managed to get kidnapped? Despite everyone else at his manor, servants and children alike getting killed? You'd think noblemen like that would have some decent exorcists among their personal guard. Suppose he did. But I heard every blade there, sword and spear alike, was found chipped and cracked to hell. Hmm. What kind of demon could do that? Who are the Kapaluses? They are one of the great noble lines on par with Oscar's Dragonia family, and have served Midgand for generations. <sighs> People refer to them as the royal family's hidden dagger. Unlike me, you never hear good rumors about them. They say behind the royal family's glory lies blood and tears shed at the hand of the Kapalus family. But those are just rumors. Although I do know that in recent times, the Count had stood against the rise of the Abbey. I couldn't care less about the whereabouts of some noble. But we should be careful of the demon that took out all those exorcists. Yeah, it sounds like a worthy opponent. 
I wouldn't go to Laban Tunnel. A nasty demon called the Beast of Blades wanders around there. Well, I think we're gonna exactly go over there and go fight it, because that, like Rokoro said, that sounds like a great challenge. And that means more experience, and possibly another Ignisite. Be that. Say hello to the frogs. But we're at least back here now, so we can go see Videl. Oh, wait. Ugh, I need a wife so bad. You and me both. Dad, are you seriously thinking about getting married again at your age? That's kind of creepy, my dude. Give me that. You should stay away from the innkeeper's son. I'm not saying that to be mean. It's for everyone's good. Hi, Videl. We found another one of the ingredients. Thanks. Have you figured out any of the remaining ones? Yeah, but only one of them. Are you okay? Are you feeling sick again or something? I found something else in the book. The Omega Elixir was originally concocted as a way to cure the 12 year sickness. The 12 year sickness? An incurable disease. Every 12 days, you break out in a fever. Each fever is just a bit worse than the one before it. And when you turn 12, you die. That's just like what Muffy had. Fidel, you're not saying... My symptoms are an exact match. And well, my 12th birthday is coming up. Fidel, don't worry. I'll get you the other ingredients. We can make the Omega Elixir together. It's no use. There's no way you can get them all in time. And even if you did, I'm not sure I could actually make the Omega Elixir. We can do it. When there's a will, there's a way. Easy for you to say. You're not the one who's sick here. You get to travel across the world. You get to see all kinds of incredible things. Fidel. Just go. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to anybody right now. Mm. Laffy said you don't have to feel so bad. It's okay. Thanks, Eleanor. But Videl's right. I hadn't even considered his point of view. But you were just trying to be nice. Well, even if he doesn't want me to interfere with him, I still want to make that Omega Elixir. He's a friend, and he's in pain. I want to help him. Yeah, you're right. I'll help you out too. Keep basking in them sunshine and rainbows, kids. But as far as anyone knows, there's not one case in all of recorded history of anyone who has it surviving. How does it progress? It's incredibly rare, only caught by children. Nobody knows how they get it. Some people think they're born with it. Might even be a curse. Symptoms are certainly weird enough. A fever every 12 days, just like Laffy. Did he have the 12 year sickness too? Did Artorius know that when he decided to sacrifice Luffy? Was there never any hope to save him at all? Was he doomed to die at age 12? That's... that's too much to... <sighs> well, this sucks. We at least got the third elixir. I have nothing to say to you. Go away. Okay. But we'll at least have the next recipe. Instructions to gather a cloud sheep egg. Apparently they can be found in Gal's Lake and Baird Marsh. So they can be found in both? So we're gonna have to head back to Port Zexon. But for now, let's go do Rokuro's Blade. We're gonna go to the Laban Cavern. But we're gonna do that next time. We're gonna quickly talk to everyone else here that we can. We used to go on play adventures with Videl all the time. I hope we can do it again soon. Yeah, he always told fun stories with a lot of detail. Sorry, but I don't know of a medicine that can help. Some would call it a curse rather than a sickness. Just like Demon Blight, we have no cure. I is that so? Quickly just sell some of this stuff. Oh my god, I have so much wine. I love horses. So beautiful, so powerful. And they fight like an extension of my own will. Indeed, it may be improper to say, but they're different from simple tools like Malakim. That's kind of fucked up. Balmy fluid. 
Now and again, someone will tell me they've been to the far continent, but those are just fish stories. We don't know how far off it is or in what direction, let alone have a route. There's no way anyone could find such a place. Such a feat would be impossible. Not exactly. All you need is some guts, some knowledge, and a crew with the death wish. Not the hardest thing to do in the world. Right? I just hope what you're doing helps everyone out. Anyway, here's your reward. Got that from the Moonbang Wolf. Very good, very good. And that should be basically everybody. So, I think with that, we'll end it off here. Thank you all so much for watching. Next time, we got a little plan. We're gonna go to the Levon Cavern. Then, we'll probably go over here to the Gals Lake Load and look for that load, road, to go find the egg. And then we'll probably go take on that, uh, Class 4 Island that we unlocked earlier. Thank you so much for watching, and have an excellent rest of your day. Bye.